boys and girls, and welcome to Earth Science Rocks. Now today we're gonna go on a little rock and roll trip, so let's go meet your guide, Simon. Thanks, Walt. Today we're on a road trip to show you some geology in New York State. We're gonna show you some igneous rocks, some sedimentary rocks, and some metamorphic rocks. We're gonna show you how each type of rock is formed, how to identify them, and we're gonna to try to find some cool examples in New York State. Let's start our trip by taking a look at igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are different from metamorphic and sedimentary rocks because they have interlocking crystals, gas pockets, and a glassy texture. And we're gonna start by going 60 kilometers straight down below New York State to see how they're formed. Here I am in a magma chamber 60 kilometers under New York State. Igneous rock forms when magma like this cools and solidifies, turning into rock. If the magma cools deep under the earth, it takes a long time to lose heat. This allows time for large crystals to grow, forming an intrusive igneous rock. Intrusive rocks are identified by their large interlocking crystals. It's really hot down here. Let's get out of here. At volcanoes, the magma reaches the surface and cools too rapidly for crystals to form. The result is an extrusive igneous rock and they're identified by microscopic crystals, gas pockets, and a glassy texture. The Earth Science Reference Table has an excellent table for identifying igneous rock, and the table is called the Scheme for Igneous Rock Identification. As you can see, the rocks are sorted by grain or crystal size on the vertical axis, and color, density, and composition on the horizontal axis. Uh -huh. I know, it sounds confusing, but it's not that bad. As you go lower on the table, the crystals get bigger. As you move from left to right, the color gets darker, the density gets higher, and the composition goes from felsic to mafic. Have your teacher show you how to use the bottom half of the table to learn about the mineral composition and igneous rocks. Let's go find some igneous rock and use the reference tables to identify them. Here we are at the Palisades cell. Geologists tell me that this is made of igneous rock, but what kind? Hmm, the crystals are too small to see, but it's not glassy. And it feels dense. Hmm, so crystals around one millimeter and dark in color. It must be diabase. So the Palisade sill is made of diabase. Well, that's quite silly now, isn't it? Some igneous rocks have gas pockets, like this one. If it does, it's called vesicular. That's silly. There are not many examples of intrusive igneous rocks in New York State, but there's some great ones in California. Oh, hi. We're at Yosemite National Park in California, where there's a lot of great examples of igneous intrusive rocks. There's some good rock climbing here as well. This is an example of an igneous rock that has large crystals, a light color, and pretty low density. But what kind of rock is it? Hmm. Well, it has crystals larger than one millimeter, and it's light in color. It must be granite. That's a pretty handy table. Don't take it for granite. Ow! You know, I think we've talked enough about igneous rocks. Let's talk about sedimentary rocks. Hey, I know somebody who can wrangle us up some good information about sedimentary rocks. Who's that? Sedimentary Sam. Yeehaw! <laughs> Well, how to do it, boys. Hi, Sedimentary Sam. This is my friend Jason. And we were wondering if you could teach us a thing or two about sedimentary rocks. Oh, you've come to the right place. So how do you identify sedimentary rocks? Well, they're made of cemented particles, and they're the only rocks that can have fossils in them. So they don't have interlocking crystals, gas pockets, and a glassy texture? No, you're thinking of igneous rocks. So how are sedimentary rocks formed? First thing you got to know is that there's actually three kinds of sedimentary rocks. There's clastic, bioclastic, and chemical precipitates. Clastic rocks are formed by other rocks that are weathered into fragments and eroded by streams, wind, or glaciers and deposited as layers in the ocean. Like a sedimentary sandwich. That's right. And then their layers at the bottom get compacted by the layers on the top and minerals come together and cement them together to make sedimentary rock. Right, and it's the size of the particles that we base the names on. 
Yeah, you got it, Simon. Now bioplastic rocks are formed different. Coal forms when ancient plants are buried, broken down, and compressed. Fossil limestone forms when shells of ancient sea organisms are buried and cemented together. Oh, so coal is really plants and fossil limestone is just shells? That's right. Now just like the plants that make it, coal burns. Okay, so what about those rocks that are formed through chemical precipitation? Alright, the best way is for me to show y'all. And don't get confused by the word precipitation. It doesn't only mean rain, snow, and stuff. In this case, it is when dissolved minerals come out of solution and form crystals. So, if I add salt to this beaker of water, the salt dissolves. Then, as the water evaporates, there's less room for the dissolved salt. And the salt forms crystals, and they fall to the bottom. You got it! <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sedimentary Sam. We are going to use our earth science reference tables to identify some sedimentary rocks in New York State. Where should we go? Well, you could go up to Lake George, you could go to the Catskills, or you could go see a salt mine in central New York. Well, thanks a lot, Sedimentary Sam.